Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Il Vangelo Secondo Matteo, known in English as The Gospel According to Matthew, which I saw yesterday at the Kino Babylon. This film was released in Venice on September 4, 1964, until it was released throughout the rest of Italy on October 2 of that same year. This was directed and written by Pier Paolo Pasolini. It was produced by Alfredo Bini. It was based on the Gospel of Matthew from the Bible. The cinematographer was Tonino degli Colli. It was edited by Nino Baragli with music arranged by Luis Enriquez Bakalov and Carlo Rusticelli. And it starred the talents of Enrique Irazocchi, Enrico Maria Salerno, Margherita Caruso, Susano Pasolini, Marcello Morante, Gianni Bonagura, Mario Socrate, Pino Locchi, Settimo Di Porto, Alfonso Gatto, Luigi Barbini, Giacomo Morante, Giorgio Agamben, Guido Ceretanni, Rosario Migalle, Ferruccio Nuzzo, Marcello Galdini, Elio Spaziani, Otello Sestilli, Juan Rodolfo Vilcol, Alessandro Clerici, Amerigo Bevilacqua, Francesco Leonetti, Franca Capuane, Paola Tadesco, Rossana Di Rocco, Renato Terra, Eliseo Boschi, and Natalia Ginsburg. Now, a little bit of history of Pier Paolo Pasolini. He was one of Italy's most important filmmakers of all time. He had his fair share of controversies with his political and religious views and views of society as a whole. And not to mention, he did come up with some really controversial titles, most notably the likes of Salo or 120 Days of Sodom. I basically learned about this gentleman through my film history lessons during my time at film school where I was studying to be an actor. He was basically a very interesting figure and someone who really had a lot of interesting visions and was pretty strong in his own right. And at times, even though a lot of people did not really agree with him or his views in general or probably found him to be kind of unorthodox as a person, his films continued to be as important as the legacy that he led. In fact, this was definitely a film that was quite an interesting turnaround from a lot of the controversial stuff that he usually produced. This was made after Il Ricotta, and this was also quite something new to be expected from someone as controversial and kind of unorthodox and kind of interesting in his own special way, like Signore Pasolini. This basically was hailed by a lot of the critics as a very reverent telling of the story of Jesus. And it was basically marked as one of the best films to tell the story of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is rather interesting in its own special way. In fact, this film has been marked as one of the 100 best films of all time by not only a lot of people from the church, but also to a lot of film fans in general, especially to a lot of fans of world cinema. And not to mention, this also had another version which also was dubbed into English, but instead of its complete 137 minute run, it was reduced to about 91 minutes, cutting off a lot of the details that might have been important and probably might have played a big part throughout the entire film. So I completely came into this film by complete chance. I was quite aware of the director himself who made this film and the legacy that he led despite some controversies. And he was quite the interesting figure, as I said before. So where does this film stand in my opinion? Let's find out. Starting off with the story. From what I can see from the story, it really does know how to weave everything together really, really well. It just feels so well woven together and really well thought out. Yes, there may have been some moments in which there were just certain resolutions that may have been too fast or have been a little bit of unresolved resolutions. But as the story is, it's still well woven and it really does 
portray the life of Christ in such a really great manner. And what I really, really love about this film is its use of atmosphere. There is not a heck load of dialogue to be found in a lot of the characters, but when it comes to the atmosphere and when it comes to the music being chosen for certain scenes, which I will gladly talk about once I get to the music section, it really does move the story along in a way that really grabs the audience's attention and you really get invested. And what's also interesting was that the portrayal of Satan in this film is not grotesque, nor overly demonic, nor overly evil. He basically comes in as a shady man who basically tempts Jesus to do all these things. And it just feels like it's a very natural portrayal of this demonic character, thus basically humanizing him while making him very shady as a character, which I found really, really interesting. And on top of that, there have been also characters who have their own human frailties that really make this film stand out in its own special way and made me feel invested every single time. So I'm not going to mince words here about the story. It's very well woven, even though some loose ends do need to be fixed. But that's a small dent in what is otherwise a really great story, which is so well woven and has a clear beginning, middle, and end. The cinematography for the time was really interesting in its own special way. The fact that they didn't really use any effects at all really does show the power of the camera and the power behind the cinematographer who really knew how to handle that said apparatus in such a way that really makes it quite intriguing in its own special way. And yes, you could really see that with Without any effects, you might think it's not going to work. But given the fact that Pasolini and all the crew members were basically shooting this entire shebang on a budget, you could really tell that they made the best out of what little they had and made it something that really sparkled in its own special way. So it really is fascinating whether the camera movements really make a great impact on the temptations of Jesus or the crucifixion scene, or many, many other certain moments which really make the story come alive. And speaking of the music, it is definitely really well done. The only flaw that I've noticed about the music is that there are times that certain pieces do get repeated over and over again, causing it to be a little bit monotonous, but they really do help bring out the serious and the weighty moments of the entire film and really know how to move the story along without making it sound too overly melodramatic and without making it too schmaltzy for one's likes. The music essentially feels like it complements the story. It moves the story along in a way that feels natural. The interesting thing about the music arranged here is that the people behind it chose classical pieces, most notably from Bach and Mozart, most notably Bach's Erbarme dich, O oh Gott. And then we also have some gospel music being used and even an African chant. And these choices of music are basically woven really wonderfully together to create such a powerful experience which complements the story, complements the performance, and complements the overall cinematography that really makes this something really worthwhile to listen to and not to just watch. And the characters are quite fascinating as well. What's really great about all these characters is that you really do see that they are just like everyday people. Interestingly enough, I haven't really talked about the actors yet, but Pier Paolo Pasolini basically chose non-professionals to be in this film. And they have also ranged from bakers to writers to people of many other occupations. 
So it does create a sense of realism, especially when you notice the character's flaws in terms of their physicalities and their basic human instincts, and you really get to see them come alive in their own special way. And let's just say that with Judas, you might feel that you might need to basically weep for his plight because once you see what happens to him during the crucifixion, which I dare not spoil, your heart does go out to him. And as I said before, the portrayal of Satan in this film is basically not so grotesque, nor overly demonic, nor caricaturish. It's basically someone who takes the form of a man who is quite shady and who looks quite ambiguous but makes a lot of shady deals and we really get to see that happen in its own special way. So I'm not going to mince words here. The characters really do have something quite special, though I would have loved to see some minor characters also get their fair share of development, most notably Salome, Herodes, and Herodias. What we see from Zalome is that she's basically a very sweet young girl who dances on the table and wants the head of John the Baptist. And speaking of John the Baptist, we even do follow him from time to time. And he's basically in his jail cell, basically foretelling the future of the Messiah. And it's really fascinating to really hear these words coming out of his mouth and he is definitely a fascinating character in his own special way. So overall, like I said before, the characters are really well presented in this film and they really do stick well with their counterparts in the Bible. So you could definitely tell that Signore Pasolini did a fantastic job in really doing a lot of research and really giving a lot of heart to this said project even though he was a Marxist, a homosexual, and many other things that made him quite controversial. And now we get to the acting. As I said before, Pasolini hired a lot of non-professionals to embody these characters. In fact, the main actor, who was Enrique Itharocchi, was a 19-year-old writer and a student who was basically well known for his writings, most notably about Pasolini's films. Pasolini's choice was to originally cast professional actors in the role of Jesus Christ. But when he saw the young student in the form of Enrique Itharocchi, he decided to cast him too, mostly thanks to his work in the form of his thesis. And I thought that with Enrique Itharocchi, he did a fantastic job portraying Jesus Christ. He really knew how to embody this character with all of the subtleties, and he really knew the art of less is more. And every time you look at his face, his eyes, his countenance, there lies a whole bunch of expressions which come out very naturally, and therein lies a human being, a man who shows compassion to the needy and the lonely, and has that sense of inner toughness and strength, which really make this character, or shall I say this man, very fascinating, and very much someone who is in complete command of not only the entire story, but also portrays him as a human being who does not take crap from anybody, but someone who is willing to show compassion, kindness, and wisdom. And he really knew how to portray those facets exceptionally and really knew how to embody this character with dignity and an inner sense of strength. The other standouts in this performance include the likes of Renato Terra's portrayal of Satan. You could really see that this guy does not ham it up, nor was he too wooden. He was indeed very natural of how he portrayed this very demonic character. You could really see that slimy nature, 
but also that nature that makes you say that he's quite a shady character and he is extremely convincing. The other standout was Otelo Sestiti as Judas Iscariot as he really does know how to play the ambiguity of this character wonderfully while making sure that he doesn't make him too venomous nor too sweet, but find that middle ground in which he uses that very well. Margarita Caruso does a very wonderful job in portraying the role of the young Virgin Mary in which she manages to really make her performance come alive in the sense that she does give off a sense of youth and overall beauty to this character. Rosana Di Rocco as the angel, presumably the angel Gabriel, does a very fantastic job in making the angel a very commanding character while retaining that youthfulness and that authority in which it all combines into one great package. Paolo Tedesco as Zalome is both alluring and very charming in her own special way. And then we get to Francesco Leonetti's portrayal of Herod Antipas, who does a very fine job making this character quite slimy in his own special way. So the acting was really authentic and very, very well done, given the fact that almost all of these actors were basically non-actors, but also had a lot of different jobs in real life. So overall, this was definitely a very well done film and really was a fine portrayal of the life and times of Jesus Christ. And with that said, I give this film a really well deserved 4.5 out of 5. Despite some elements of the story that felt a bit rushed and despite some of the cinematography which tend to really be almost all over the place, it still is a very well done film with really great characters, great acting, and really great musical arrangement, all thanks to the likes of Luis Enriquez Bakalov and Carlo Rusticelli. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later for my review of Run Milka Run, known in Hindi as Bag Milka Bag. So until then, have a great evening, everybody.